Last year, I was traveling back from college to go home. My college was about a 10 hour drive and I had initially planned to drive through the night, but at about two in the morning, I was overcome with sleepiness and knowing I still had about four hours to drive, I decided I needed to stop. I saw a sign for a rest stop and I pulled off. The rest stop was fairly quiet and I parked in the corner. I extended my seat back and closed my eyes. I was so tired that I fell right asleep. Sometime later though, I woke up. I looked out my windshield to see it was still dark out. Then I turned my head to my driver's side window to see a man standing at the window looking in. He had a beard and as soon as he saw me looking at him, he started to smile. I freaked out and started scrambling to find my keys. He then tried opening my door. It was locked of course and then the man began knocking at the window. I found my keys that were in the cup holder and started my car as fast as I could. I pulled out of there and drove all the way home. I arrived home safely at 7 a.m. I never plan on sleeping at a rest stop again. A couple years ago, my wife and I were doing a cross-country road trip. We were heading west and somewhere along the way, we stopped for the night at a rest stop. We didn't mind sleeping in our car and we wanted to save money on hotels. This rest stop had a little building with bathrooms and some vending machines in it. At about 11.30 p.m., I went in it to brush my teeth. It had a pretty decent sized bathroom and it looked well taken care of. There was about five stalls and five sinks as well, and it had good lighting. I got out my toothbrush and started brushing. I noticed that someone was in the far stall on the end because I saw feet on the floor, but other than that there was no one else in there. When I finished brushing my teeth, I left the bathroom and started walking back down the hall of the rest stop when I heard a stall door slam shut very loudly from the bathroom. Then it happened again and again. There was a stall door being repeatedly opened and shut. The man that was in there must have been slamming it over and over again. It kind of creeped me out and I walked faster to get back to our car. Once I got back to the car, I was very tired and we went right to sleep. I woke up in the night and I really had to pee. I got out of our car quietly so I didn't wake up my wife. When I got out, I looked at my phone to see that it was 2.42 a.m. I walked back into the rest stop and into the bathroom. As soon as I stepped in, I remembered the man and I saw someone was in the far stall again. The shoes appeared to be the same as the man's before. The bathroom only had stalls, so I went in the closest one to the door. As soon as I shut the stall, I heard the one on the far end open. I heard the man walk from the end and then stop directly in front of my stall. I turned around to see through the crack that he was looking right at me. He then tried opening it. I said, what do you want, in a nervous voice. There was no answer. I had to think quickly of how I could get out of there. The man seemed to be insane. I stuck my foot under the side of the stall as if I was going to go under the stalls to the one next to me. The man moved a little to his left. At that moment I pushed the stall open as fast as I could and into the man, pushing him back. I took off and sprinted to the door and ran out of the bathroom. He began chasing after me and I could hear him about 10 feet behind me. I didn't bother to look back at all, I just ran as fast as I could. I ran all the way to my car jumped inside and locked the doors literally two or three seconds before the man got to the car and started trying the doors before he started banging on my window. My wife woke up and started freaking out. She was very confused. I didn't have time to explain. I started the engine and drove off faster than I ever have before in my life. As I drove away, I saw the man just stand there and stare at me. My wife was in shock and I tried to explain everything to her. Eventually, we stopped at another rest stop about 20 miles down the road to sleep the rest of the night. But after that, we haven't been to a rest stop since.
Every year, a couple of friends and I take a road trip out west. Last time, we were about halfway through the trip when we decided to stop at a rest stop in Colorado. It was about 11 p.m. We weren't going to spend the night there, but we just needed to stop to use the restroom and stretch our legs. The rest stop was very unique. It was rather large and near some mountains. However, not very many people were there. In fact, I didn't see any other cars in the parking lot at all. My friends went in to use the bathrooms. I stayed back to check the oil on the car, and once they got back, I went in. The rest stop had several displays of local attractions and things like that, as well as the typical bathrooms and vending machines. As I went in the bathroom, I heard someone walk in the rest stop and walk towards the bathroom, but nobody went in. It sounded like they were just standing outside. Once I left the bathroom, nobody was there. I heard footsteps walking around the corner, but once I got around the corner, no one was there. Then I heard them from back near the bathrooms where I just was. This confused me a lot, and I walked back around the corner to see nobody was there again. I guess maybe my friends were somehow pulling a prank on me. I started to walk back, and then I heard someone shaking the vending machine near the door. Now I knew it had to be my friends, and I walked over to see the vending machines, and of course, nobody was there. I just shook my head and walked back out to the car to see all my friends inside waiting for me. I asked them if they were inside at all, but they all told me no. I suddenly got the creeps and said we should get out of there. We drove away and got to our hotel. I still don't know who or what was making those noises. Last year, my parents and I drove to New York. I was 14 at the time. On the last day before arriving, we were in upstate New York and stopped at a rest stop to get food. The rest stop was rather large and busy. It had about five restaurants in it. There must have been at least a hundred people inside. We went in and saw there was lines for every restaurant. My parents wanted tacos, but I wanted pizza. So I got in the line for pizza and they went around the corner. I got in the end of the line. There was maybe five people in front of me. I stood there and waited. After about a minute, I felt two arms grab my shoulders. I thought it was my dad, but when I looked, it was some guy who looked like he was 50 or 60. He had on a leather jacket and grayish hair. He was smiling and asked me what kind of pizza I was buying. I told him cheese, and he said he would buy it for me. I said no thanks, but he insisted. I figured free pizza is free pizza, so I said all right. He talked to me the entire time we were in line, just asking me lots of basic questions about myself. I was hoping my parents would come over. I couldn't see them because the taco place was around the corner. Eventually, he got the pizza for me and I told him I needed to get back to my parents. He told me he saw them go outside and they were waiting for me and started to lead me outside. Looking back, I can't believe I was so stupid, but I actually believed him. We walked outside and we got towards the parking lot, but I could see my car and my parents were not there. I started to turn around, but the man put his arm around my shoulder and kept walking. I asked him where we were going. He started to walk faster and his grip got tighter. He just kept smiling and told me to shut up. I then told the man to let me go. He said shut up again. We reached his car which was parked in the far corner. I was not going to get in his car. I yelled at him to let me go as loud as I could before he covered my mouth. I was able to get some people's attention. A woman came over to us. The man said I was just being difficult and everything was fine. I told her no it wasn't and I used this opportunity to run to the woman. The man continued to try to pretend that I was with him but I could tell the woman wasn't buying it and I told her to call the police. At this moment, the man got into his car and drove off. I am disappointed to say I didn't get the license plate, but I did get back to my parents who called the police and they questioned me. I don't believe the man was ever caught, but I'm sure glad I wasn't abducted.